Hi guys. Well, this is actually Christmas Eve. I still have a little bit of cold. I hope you can hear me. So we are now on our third video uh, about this occasion talks. And as you may remember in the last video, well, when I was really sick and couldn't talk, but now I can kind of talk a little bit. So I don't want you to miss because I couldn't make a video yesterday. So if you remember last time I mentioned a few things. Uh, so we dealt with overview, uh, we dealt with reasons for doing or not doing a doctorate. So we did that in the last video number two. Today I would just like to talk to you about some general considerations uh, which some people know and some don't. Since I'm a psychologist, um, this will, most of the things that I will talk about in future may apply to psychology and I'm not quite sure but it's the same situation with other doctorates, okay? So bear this in mind. Uh, so let's talk about types of doctoral studies. So we have theoretical and applied, at least in psychology. The theoretical one is what everybody knows as PhD. So you have PhD in anything. PhD in psychology, PhD in business, PhD in, in, in uh, physiology, PhD in biochemistry, so you have a PhD. PhD is a theoretical doctorate. So when you become doctor of uh, something, uh, the PhD is actually doctor of philosophy and this is a theoretical degree. So we are not applying anything to anything. We are just contributing to existing knowledge or as it's called, we are filling the gap in the literature, okay? In psychology at least, I really am not sure if it is the same in some other disciplines, but in psychology we have applied doctorate. In an applied doctorate, we are going to be taking totally different approach to our research, because we are doing something that may be applied to in practice. So we are not doing theory. So for example, if I'm doing research in panic attacks, I, in my PhD, I will be um, contributing to knowledge of panic attacks. I'm not going to devise any um, uh, particular tests that we are going to apply straight away. We are going to leave it to applied psychologists to do it, or to clinics or somebody else. We are just going to uh, teach other people or discover more things in theory in order to have somebody else use that knowledge to apply it somehow, okay? It's, it's kind of a, a, a concept that I will go into a bit more. So here we are talking about PhD, and PhD is what most people know, not many people know about applied doctorate, so Everybody is going to do PhD, that's what they all think about, and I will talk about these conclusions uh, next time. Now, I want to talk about this consideration about where I'm studying. Are we studying on campus in traditional university or are we studying online? There are some differences here. If we are on campus, we have a um, different structure because we have colleagues, we have uh, other uh, uh, tutors, we have PhD students, and we have kind of a, a constant um, ability to discuss things with them, to discuss our research, and they can give us an input. Maybe we can even present parts of our research, and you know, before we even finish, that we can get the input. We can kind of brainstorm with people all the time. Online, we don't have that possibility, so. The classes online are kind of structured, that they are guiding parts of your dissertation. And so uh, typically you're going to spend a lot of time learning and doing these parts. And the actual, actual data collection or data collection is going to be a shorter period of time. For example, I did my PhD in England and my PhD was my research only, so I collected my data for three years, I think. On, in online uh, situation, 
you're not going to be doing it for such a long time. You're going to be doing various other classes and preparing research and preparing purpose statement, problem statement, etc. And then the time will come to do uh, data collection and really you're not going to be spending more than a few weeks, a few months at the maximum because the structure is completely different. So you need to think about it when you decide how you want to start. Of course, studying online, that's your only choice if, if, if you're working. So, uh, you know, it's just a different approach. You also have to consider who is paying for your tuition. Of course, if you're paying from your pocket, you want to finish this as soon as possible. Um, if, if you're funded by a military or by your job, etc., you may have some conditions as to how many times you can repeat a class, or how many years you have to actually complete and so, so forth. So it's kind of stressful because you have that limited time to do something in. So if you're passionate about something, you may not get results uh, so quickly. Uh, you know, you can't rush it. There are certain things you just can't rush. So consider that, the time and the money. Uh, do you have a topic of interest already? If you do, that's wonderful. If you don't, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing PhD? Because I don't have this burning desire to do anything, so why am I doing it? Uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not in my, you may, you, you may uh, find something that interests you, interest so it's not in my. But if you have a topic of interest, it's easier because you have a wide topic of interest and then you're going to narrow it down to a very small area. So for example, students will come with an idea, I would really like to look into um, post-traumatic disorders in single parents, for example. But this is too wide, you know. There are single parents from most walks of life. There are the rich ones, there are the poor ones, there are the ones who are working, the ones who are not working, the females, the males, there's so many parameters. They're older, they're younger, and so on. But if you have any, a big idea, your tutors uh, uh, and your chairs and other colleagues will help you narrow it down to a small, small area of interest. Now, do you have a previous degree in related subjects? So, for example, um, you want to do an uh, area in psychology, but your previous degree was in sociology, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that you may not have the same appreciation for the uh, needs in psychology and vice versa. So think about that. It doesn't mean that you will not be accepted. It just means that you may have to take additional classes. And the last point, uh, extra training in addition to this previous point is, for example, did you do statistics? Did you do any research methods before. Uh, you may have had psychology, but you really didn't do much of a statistics. And you need to know that you need a lot of statistics for psychology, uh, even if you're not doing uh, quantitative methods, because qualitative also have data analysis. So you have to take all this into consideration before you decide to, to do PhD, where you're going to do it, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So now for those of you who actually have some kind of celebration, holidays of some sort. Um, enjoy your free time. Uh, I will make another video tomorrow. Uh, and we will just carry on. And if you have the time, have a look at it, subscribe, tell me what you want me to talk about. And as soon as I finish this mini-series, I'm going to find a topic that you told me you would like to know of, and I'm going to explore it further. I hope this helped. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, we will meet again. Thank you. Bye-bye.